Fire trucks have been around basically as long as we've had regular trucks, with motorized transport taking over from horse and steam powered fire engines in the early 1900s. By the 1960s, the concept of a typical fire truck was pretty clearly defined. And in the over 60 years since, you'd have to agree that the municipal fire engine really hasn't changed that much. But somewhere along the way, airport firefighting went rogue, resulting in a vehicle that seems to be part robot, part monster truck. Something that looks like it doesn't just fight fire, it actively hunts it down. Today, in this video, we're going to look at how this specialized vehicle came to be, and what makes aircraft, rescue, and firefighting units so different from their standard fire engine counterparts. During World War II, military vehicles equipped with pumps, water tanks, and CO2 extinguishers were employed as crash trucks at allied airfields around the world. And they served the purpose well enough. But by the end of the war, the need for dedicated aircraft firefighting designs was apparent. Enter the Air Rescue and Firefighting, or ARF, vehicle. These specialized trucks were intended to meet the new challenges of the jet era, where military planes were now faster, larger, and carried both more fuel and ordnance. From that start, the aircraft firefighting apparatus continued to evolve. First of all, it became obvious that having crews hanging off the top of trucks operating turrets was not really in the best interests of safety, and thus, articulating water cannons that could be controlled from inside the cab became a standard feature in ARF designs. Now with airports and passenger jets also becoming larger, general aviation embraced the ARF initiative as well. In the late 1960s, manufacturers such as Oshkosh and the Walter Motor Truck Company introduced civilian versions of their ARF vehicles that provided more capacity, better off-road capabilities, and improved acceleration when compared to standard airport fire trucks. Eventually, the aircraft rescue and firefighting vehicle became the sophisticated million dollar machine you see before you now. Built for one purpose, to quickly, efficiently, and safely neutralize aircraft fires. So let's take a closer look at how it does this. A typical municipal fire truck is basically a mobile toolbox, carrying equipment for structure fires, car crashes, medical calls, and other various rescue situations. Airport fire trucks, on the other hand, have one job, suppression of fuel-fed fires to facilitate the safe evacuation of aviation passengers. One unique challenge of airport firefighting is that unlike urban environments, there's usually no readily available water supply system that can be utilized. On the tarmac, hydrants are limited, and there's definitely no time to leave, refill, and come back later. ARF needs to be able to handle an emergency with what's on board. Thus, these vehicles typically have a water capacity of 1,500 to 4,500 gallons, as well as foam and dry chemical agents that are designed to suppress and smother fuel-fed fires. The combination of foam concentrate and compressed air means an ARF vehicle's output can actually triple its capacity, turning 4,000 gallons of water into 12,000 gallons of fire-smothering foam. When it comes to distributing that capacity, an integral feature of ARF is the pump and roll capability, making the vehicle a mobile firefighting platform that can start suppression operations even if an aircraft is still moving. At minimum, ARF vehicles are equipped with a bumper or roof-mounted articulating water cannon, while larger models include a high-reach extendable turret that allows them to operate at a distance, keeping the vehicle safe, and providing the ability to attack fires from above. These extendable turrets will often have penetrating nozzles, like the Oshkosh Snozzle, that are designed to pierce aircraft skin and attack fires within the fuselage, a dangerous task that used to be done by firefighters physically entering the aircraft. But now, this can all be handled by a single driver, sitting in the safety of a cab and making use of both regular and infrared cameras. ARF vehicles also feature under-truck nozzles that protect the apparatus from ground fires and give it the unique capability to suppress large fuel-soaked areas just by driving over them. In the US, ARF requirements are dictated by the FAA, and one of the most important regulations is speed of response. It states that within three minutes from the time of an alarm, an aircraft and firefighting vehicle must be able to reach the midpoint of the furthest runway. 
to help achieve this, some large airports have multiple ARF posts spread throughout the field. But mainly, this response time is satisfied by the incredible power of these vehicles. With upwards of 700 horsepower, these diesel engines can get fully loaded 80,000 pound vehicles up to 50 miles per hour in only 30 seconds, or about twice as fast as a typical fire engine. Almost as important as speed is the ability to take the most direct route to the scene. Our vehicles are built for off-road use, with oversized tires, independent suspension, and are available in four-wheel, six-wheel, and even eight-wheel drive variants. But despite their size and weight, these massive off-road machines are also maneuverable. Roll stability control makes these 30 to 40 ton fully loaded ARF units capable of tight cornering at high speeds. And all wheel steering provides precise control when moving around the accident scene. And those cab designs that give the ARF truck its distinctive look, well, they are made that way for a purpose. Giving the vehicle the ability to move easily through sloped terrain and culverts that a regular fire truck could never navigate. ARF crews may train for once-in-a-lifetime situations, but they and their impressive equipment do have uses outside the airport. In fact, specific gates in the perimeter fencing are actually made to shear off and permit these firefighting beasts to go on the hunt in the wild. Yes, ARF vehicles are not limited to air accidents that happen at the airfield they are stationed, and will often respond to any aviation-related crashes in the area. For instance, ARF Unit Foam 331 and firefighters from the Washington National Airport were among the first to respond to the crash of American Airlines Flight 77 at the Pentagon on September 11, 2001. Additionally, aviation firefighters are sometimes called upon to help with vehicle fires or accidents involving large fuel spills or other highly combustible materials. One example of this was the Atlanta I-85 bridge fire in 2017 where flammable construction materials were fought by regular firefighters for over an hour before airport trucks arrived with foam and finally started making some progress. The ARF apparatus is also very effective in battling grass and brush fires, which makes use of both their off-road capabilities and pump and roll prowess. And as an added perk to their already awesome job, ARF vehicles get to participate in the aviation tradition known as the Water Salute. This ceremony is performed to mark the retirement of a senior pilot, the first or last flight of a specific type of aircraft, or even as a token of respect for the remains of soldiers killed in action. Hope you enjoyed this brief look into the aircraft and rescue firefighting engine. If you enjoy aviation, spaceflight, or just interesting historical documentaries, I invite you to subscribe and check out my other content. Linked here is the video that YouTube thinks you will enjoy the most. So why don't you just accept that our Google overlords know best and give it a click. My name is Sledge. Thanks for watching.